good morning <laughs> to you. It's Christmas Day. Welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're super excited to be spending this Christmas morning with you. My name is Ruben Paulson. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. I was just thinking about the song uh, a long time ago <clears throat> or some time ago long that time I. Ago. That in Bethlehem. Continue. So the Holy Bible says, mm -hmm. Mary's born child, Jesus Christ, was born for on Christmas, Christmas Day. Day. My voice is not so great, <laughs> but manage it. Okay. But the song I was thinking about was this one that they were saying, um, you know, uh, Mary didn't have a place to stay. Yeah. That she was lying in a, in a manger. Uh, how did they sing this song? Um, Are you sure that's not from somewhere in Christmas Day? Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't see the baby. Oh, you know I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like that. On a Christmas morning. Ooh. Amen. Amen. Oh, I know that. Amen. Amen. I know yeah. that part. So there's the verse. Mary mm. with a baby Jesus. They had no harbor, so they lay on a manger. See them. So now I'm just thinking, Mary, mm -hmm. who had the baby Jesus, mm -hmm. had no place to stay. Mm -hmm. They were in a manger. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about what we go through <laughs> for someone else's birthday. And that yeah. I, I, saw, I saw yesterday a couple was, you know, almost fighting, you know. Because of money? Yeah, because the, the Christmas gifts didn't come the way they should have come. Uh -oh. The Christmas um, allowance doesn't come the way they usually come. And all those kind of things. And mm -hmm. I don't know how that family will be after now. After all the fighting? Well, they'll settle. <laughs> they'll settle. <laughs> they'll settle. After, settle. after Chris when Christmas is over, what do you have to do? You settle and you move on. And then you realize that a new year is coming. Mm -hmm. And all the money that you've spent in Christmas, you're like, mm, what am I going to do in this new year? And trust me, January seems so long. Yeah, it has 80 days. Oh, January seems so long. That, mm, you're like, where is all my money? But then, yes, I mean, it's nice to celebrate, you know, during the holidays. I love Christmas personally. I love the lights. I love the fireworks. Last night, I think, okay, it's about 12 a.m. this morning. I saw the fireworks going up. It was so beautiful. I love the fact that everybody is super nice. And everybody's like, oh, Merry Christmas. Everyone wants to give yeah. you something. There's just something in the air. Like the atmosphere is so calm and peaceful. And I really, really love that. And that's something I love about Christmas. What do you love about Christmas? Yeah, it's basically the same thing. Christmas just uh, just puts love in the air. Yeah. You know, even some people who may not have smiled the whole year, I mm -hmm. think at Christmas they just find time to smile. So yeah. it's really lovely uh when 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 this time gets here and like you said the lights and everything mm -hmm. even though the government tries all the time to mm. make sure that the fireworks not do not work anymore they, the street they, lights this, no no not the street okay. lights the fireworks and the bangers and yeah, all that yeah, they don't they kind of like yeah because of the um hazard uh, that it poses the yeah. security purposes is what they give but i also know a time when a friend of mine was lighting this uh uh, fireworks and all that yeah. and one of them the last one that he had on his hand in his hand oh my God, exploded. exploded and he now has two fingers on that hand the ah. right hand so there's so many things apart from the security you need to be careful if you have to light yes. it yeah. and you know yeah. the type you're lighting and mm -hmm. how right. safe it is yeah. for you to light it yeah. But I tie the fire. Like, I love how beautiful the fireworks look. Mm -hmm. But then I think one thing for me is just how Christmas is mm -hmm. celebrated and everyone is so happy and so considerate. The, even the air and seems so, to change. Yes. You know, <laughs> when, when the, and the weather you, is quite cool as yeah. well. So it's a bit foggy. But when you wake up in the morning, it's just the haze and everything. Like, it's really beautiful. And I, like I said, it's the feeling that comes with it yeah. for me. It's the fact that everybody's considerate. Everybody loves one another. Everybody's looking for a way to make the other person person smile and that's what christmas is all about christmas is all about sharing love and giving after all as a christian that i am jesus christ was given to us you know for the sake as a savior for redemption so in this season of christmas you're also to give to other people to make them happy and smile so we yeah. hope that you're doing that this morning <laughs> we hope you're making people smile 
this morning and you're just spreading love and cheer all the way today yeah and I, beyond today as well <laughs> yes. i have this i have this um philosophy that there's a jesus in every religion it's just that we christian want to own jesus like he, he belongs to us jesus has no religion in fact if you read the bible you can comfortably substitute jesus's name for love and just mm -hmm. you just keep on talking about love and in any religion where love is paramount there is a jesus inside there yeah. so whoever you are whatever faith that you have whatever religion that you have if uh, love is the focal point of your religion that is who Jesus is. It doesn't have to be that you have to go into a church before you can do yeah. that. But if you have love, uh, selfless love, mm -hmm. then you have Jesus. So this season is for you, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian. Right. But by the way, for those people who actually profess the name of Christ, uh, I think you should even show a greater example. Let people see Christ in you. Let Christ never be out of the season. That's the reason for the season. Yeah, and so you right. live by his tenets and everything that he stood for. Okay, let's move over to our top training. Obviously, is the Christmas Day special. I feel like today. a pastor right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Christmas Day special today. And we're just celebrating Christmas right here in the studio. But we're going to talk about President Tinobu's um, speech. Where are his charge to us mm -hmm. on christmas day so the president you know has obviously talked about christmas and how the nation might just be better so i'm sure you've read that story what do you think about it okay let me read this story for you so president tinubu has congratulated nigerians on the christmas day celebration assuring citizens of his administration commitment to alleviate their sufferings tinubu in his christmas message to nigerians on sunday expressed optimism that the nation will witness a new dawn of prosperity be confident that by the strength of our joint endeavor, we will shortly emerge into a new dawn of prosperity, peace, and irreversible progress, he said. He asked Nigerians to spare a moment of remembrance and prayer for the men and women of the nation's armed forces bearing arms to protect the country. He prayed that God protect them and bring them back to their families. He also called for the commemoration of the memory of those who in their service have paid the highest price for the nation while fathering by further praying for God to bless their souls and comfort their families and loved ones. The commander in chief also assured Nigerians of his administration's commitment to ease their burden. So yes, that's his Christmas message. And obviously he's saying, we're going to elevate your sufferings, hopefully. You know when they say let the poor breathe? Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that <laughs> this is what's going to happen in this season and even next year as well. Maybe in the, the spirit of Christmas, too. I forgive him and forgive all the politicians that have made me and everybody who was in Nigeria angry. Mm. But uh, it doesn't mean they have to go back to doing what they were. Like I said, uh, about the transport scheme, for instance, it's mm. a scam. I have something it, to say about It turned that. out to be, well... I don't know. Did what, you? I, what I would like to <laughs> Please say. Just say. So I was having a conversation with my hairstylist yesterday. And he said he was supposed to travel. And most of the people in his group were supposed to travel. And when they were going to travel, they went to one of the transport companies. Mm -hmm. But guess what? It was just still the same price. Mm -hmm. So there was no 50% off. And I'm like, if the government have said 50% off, how come they're still paying? Is there like, oh, maybe first 100 people to come? Is it only some people? But I don't even know of anyone who has gotten that discount, the 50% slash in price. Yeah. So I'm waiting for when they're going to come next year and say, oh, yes, we cater to five. Because I mean, the the um, they were looking at catering to five million people, mm -hmm. right? To say that five million people are going to enjoy this 50% slash in price. So I'm waiting to see the five million people because I've not seen one. They don't yet. even think through this policy. The people who travel out of Lagos alone are more than five yeah. million. Yeah. And then you're saying throughout the country, five million people. Routes. Yeah. So, so what are you even saying? I, I said it from the onset is a scam. Right now, they are in pursuit of um, the former minister of humanitarian affairs who said she was feeding children and mm -hmm, all that. And mm -hmm. they now discovered that they had more than 100 accounts yeah. where money was being siphoned and uh, luxurious things were being bought, oh. houses and everywhere. They were buying these things and said they were feeding our children. So now we have that. Okay, so tomorrow you will still find out that if another government comes and they want to probe, they will also find out that there was a, a scam somewhere here. When they were talking about uh, whatever it was that uh, needed to be done, they, the statement was very ambiguous. We didn't know if 
every company that was co contracted will be doing these trips every day with all their fleet of buses. We didn't know that. They just said they will take one trip. Mm. One trip of one bus, or is it one trip of a hundred buses, if they have that? We didn't know anything about that. There is no And it took a lot of time before we even knew the companies. We kept yes. saying it here on this program, before we knew the companies that were earmarked for that. And that, that was just five or, or yes, less five, than that. Just five, five, five companies. companies. Transfer companies. To 28 here. routes for five million people. I'm just trying to do the math here. Like, how does that even work? It doesn't. But the money that will be spent mm. for that. Tell me about it. Oh, dear. So Someone is going to... Uh, did you see... So there was a message I saw. Um, I don't know how true it is. So I'll say allegedly by um, one of the former... One of the politicians. Let me just put it there. And it says most times the politicians feel that um, embezzling money and being into power is God's blessings. Mm -hmm. So you're entering into power and you're like, oh, God has blessed me because I can now steal money. And then he, he went on to say that we have a lot of people in Nigeria, so we're going to sacrifice a few politicians, a few corrupt politicians by, you know, maybe putting them into prison or whatever. That's, that's fine. But a we few. Should, <laughs> that's, well, that was what he said. But then he's like, uh, most times people see it as God's blessings when you come into power and you're corrupt and you start to siphon money. But it's not God's blessings. You, that's not an avenue for you to go and steal and say, God bless me. That is you stealing out of your greed. That is you stealing out of wickedness. That is you stealing because you don't just care about the masses. So never see it. And also if insecurity. Stealing, you yeah. don't even know uh, where the next meal will come from mm -hmm. if you don't steal. So. Yes. So if you are a politician, right, and you're going, you're going to, into politics or you're going into power and thinking that you are, you're going there and stealing and saying it's God's blessings, no. Let's not kid ourselves. It's not God's blessings. It is you just being wicked. And I think it's time for you to repent. And I'm saying that because it's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will find time to forgive you, but we will not forget. Forgetting and forgiving, they, they usually don't go together to, for, for humans. Um, the beauty of forgiveness is not your forgetting it, it's the ability to be comfortable even when you remember that someone did really some, something really bad to you. Yeah. I can remember it, but I can still relate with you. That is true forgiveness, not because I've forgotten. Mm. So I won't go and take drugs to forget, forget everything and say you I've must, forgiven you. you. Still face the that means I've not forgiven you, I just forgot about yeah. it. So um, politicians, whoever is in the corridors of power, and even the ordinary people who are not politicians, because we know how it is. This morning, uh, when we're coming to work, uh, I had to take a bus coming to work, and the person, the driver, had upped the price for at least 20 to 30 percent of the, of, the, of the transport, and he kept saying, uh, Moto no de road. So, this one where they do seven now Christmas as they do for them. So, I'm even helping you. Yeah. So he, he forgot mm, the mm, fact mm, that mm, mm, mm. there are no much vehicles on the road, but there also are not much passengers People, on the road. Yeah. So why not just in the spirit of Christmas say, I'm slashing it, for instance? Eh? Mm. They'll tell you that there's no fuel. <laughs> no fuel. They'll tell you that there's no fuel. Fuel that we are, we are, we are manufacturing, fuel that we are, you know, Potaco refinery is back. Ooh, you know. so I'm is well, going I'm to start. That 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 there will be a is going to start production. <clears throat> And then <clears throat> I don't know why I'm hopeful it's about next year, and I don't know if it's just me, like the optimistic part of me that feels like, oh, with all of these things coming, hopefully next year, maybe 2023 was our year of famine, and then 2024 might just <sighs> be bountiful. For the us. thing is, whether whether things do not get better, we are going to adapt. We are going to evolve to that state where we will find that as the norm. Whatever is happening right now, we'll get so used to it, we won't be counting it as suffering anymore. But, you know, coming from, for instance, coming from less than 200 Naira for a liter of fuel, fuel. and then getting to 600 Naira in a very short space is quite uh, So do you know something that was quite disastrous. interesting? While I was speaking to my stylist yesterday more, yesterday afternoon, um, so we were talking about the 50% the slash in bus prices because I'm like, oh, if you're going to travel, you should use these um, transport companies because the government has been able to slash the prices. And then he's like, no, I don't. That's not true. That's not happening. I'm like, oh, my co anchor thinks it's a scam. He's like, I think it's a scam too. <laughs> <laughs> and then 
he was like, it would have been better if the government had, you know, given us like a little bit of subsidy mm -hmm. on the fuel prices. And I'm like, that yeah. is exactly what we talked about on our program, because yeah. that way it cuts across um, everyone. Everyone needs fuel for either you're powering your gen or you're servicing your business or you're driving your car. You need fuel. But if you're just going to say transport companies. So for me, that doesn't want to me that I don't like to use transport yeah. company. Are you trying to tell mm -hmm. me that? Yeah, no, you're not going to and enjoy then it. Even air tickets are out of it. So I can't fly and get that discount and air tickets are going for as much as 100 and something almost 200,000 there are 200,000 naira so tickets from Abuja to Oweri for instance so 200,000 within yeah. the same country yeah it's ridiculous a giant of Africa mm. if you go to Benin Republic for instance and you're going to the UK the money you pay to UK is like um, three times or four times less than the one you pay in Nigeria. Nigeria so if you're paying a million in in Nigeria you'll be paying 250 in Benin Republic, the giant of Africa. Well, we hope that the um, aviation minister is looking at something. Um, that I think maybe the tariffs are really, really quite high. And if he can actually subsidize it, even though we're talking about fuel Everything subsidy. they talk about now is subsidy and palliative. Sub yeah. Subsidy, palliative. But we don't even see them. When I, when, the last time, is a, bit, a very long time ago, the last time I went to Ghana, uh, we went through Bene, of course. Bene, I went on, on land. Yeah. And one of the things that struck me was that these people were carrying money in wheelbarrows and exchanging, like, you know, their bureau to change. Mm -hmm. They were carrying money in wheelbarrows. So the Nigerian currency that you will use to change for the Bene Republic currency was so small, and their money was so big. Now I think it's the reverse, okay. you know, because if you're taking, let's say, a thousand naira and then you have to collect something that is almost like uh, uh, 20,000 from them, they, they needed to carry this money in wheelbarrows and all that. But now I'm not sure it's the same case. Mm. So people prefer to go travel through Bene instead of through Lagos or Abuja to the UK, to America, to everywhere else that they are going to. Yeah. And it's, it's really, it's really disheartening. Okay, well, let's just take one more story, um, and then we, it will be time for Off the Press. So, almost five weeks after they participated in the gubernatorial election in Bios State, some officials of the Nigerian Immigration Service, NIS, who were deployed for the poll are yet to be paid the allowances. Well, this is coming. The gubernatorial election was held in Bayelsa on Saturday, November 11. However, the officers who claimed to have used their personal funds throughout the polls with the expectation that they would be paid or refunded have urged the NIS authorities not to give any room for foul play but to ensure that the allowances are paid. During the last general elections, NIS personnel at the state level were paid 90,000 naira each, while those at the headquarters received 200,000 to 300,000 naira. Back then, there were similar reports of delay in payment for of allowances to the NIS personnel deployed. Um, so, I mean, in the spirit of Christmas, you would expect that these people will have their payments because they need money to be able to feed, to be able to celebrate Christmas, to be able to give gifts. I don't even think it's fair for the people at the headquarters to earn 300,000 while the people yes. on the field are earning 90,000. Like they they're the ones with the hazards, they're the ones with all the problems that this right. sort of, they're the ones that could have been killed or mm -hmm. maimed or something. Uh, but well, anyway, that's how the civil service works. But why do you keep money of the people who have already worked? It happens in so many places. And tomorrow when you're going to work, like that and you see a bribe there's a tendency you might collect it even though you try to be upright you just remember that okay last time i did this they didn't pay me till after one year or i, I lost the money and then you mm -hmm. see a bribe and you're tempted to take it because you know that you have to uh feed your family and all that and all that they what if they, yeah. they so it's, problem almost, comes. it's almost like the you know it's like a ripple effect so it's like they're training you to be a yes, bad person. Yes, it, it's, you don't instance. have a choice. It, they, it's between the how did you say the devil and the deep blue sea, pretty much. See, the, the the police people, for instance, you go to the police college and you become a policeman. The first six months you work, most times that I know, I don't know about some other times. Maybe there are some one-off times. Most times that I know, these people are not paid for the first six months. Yeah. So because they do slot things, so you probably have to now repay. So whatever, whatever you're, you're going to say about that, but if you're not paid for the first six months that you're struggling to get a house, to get this, mm -hmm. to get that, uh, that means you will be forced, yes, yes you will be forced to do something. something. So 
So you already soil your hands mm -hmm. before they begin to pay you. So it's like, okay, you cannot say anything anymore. Mm -hmm. No okay. matter how righteous you came into the police force, it's going to be difficult to say, I didn't collect bribe. Because at the end of the day, you if need you to If you want to stop corruption, I think the first thing is pay people their wages and pay them right. You can't... Should pay them on time. Yes. You can't should change people. You want a service, but you're not willing to pay for that service. Why? How do you expect the person to actually get another means of livelihood or how they are supposed to feed their families if you're not going to pay them? So pay them, pay them well and pay them right. Pay them on time. And don't don't delay their salaries or don't even say I'm not going to pay at all because you hear Mr. of delayed salaries. Mr. President, salary. lead us well. Governor, <laughs> governor, I remember whatever your role is, whether you are a leader or a follower, do what you have said you are going to do. Right. If you go into leadership, do the leadership uh, the right way. If you are going to follow, then follow right. Mm -hmm. Do not make the leader do wrong, or you, the leader, make the follower do wrong. Mm -hmm. All that. Um, as we say on social media, may that nonsense stop for 2023. <laughs> when we enter 2024, let it be a wonderful year for yeah. all of us. And we're hoping that 2024 will be a year of prosperity. Uh, Rumor is very optimistic. Mm -hmm. I am too. I am. But I'll be, I'll be looking out more this mm -hmm. time uh, to see where you're doing wrong. And I'll tell you. And when we tell you, please do something more positive. From 2024, Nigeria should witness prosperity. We we'll to that. pray to that. Yeah, we we'll pray about that. that. Anyways, we'll go on a short break. And when we return, it will be time for other press. Well, stay with us.